It's mm. not like they, they're tapped into some magic source of genius that you're never going to be allowed go to. Honestly, I've it's just, just realized that. that. Yeah, <laughs> I have. I've just realized yeah, that. It's that, just that's... that there's certain people who are proactive and they do things and they create opportunities. And, and then there are people who allow their insecurities or their fear to stop them from doing things and and you know it's a constant battle yeah but. <laughs> yeah but I think that's exactly it. I think I think that's probably the biggest thing that I have learned or that I would say is that's so important to say is that as much as you say people don't know what they're doing they don't like there isn't like these geniuses that we talk about oh, that are actors or directors or whatever are smart achieved creative people but no one actually is any knows any more than no and I mean you learn so much you know when I when I got Outlander I had never done a, like even a minute on a tv show that I mean is... I'd, I'd done a couple of you know indie films and I'd done like a day or two on a movie here and a day or two in a movie there but mm-hmm. it's such a different beast to like tv and all of the like I didn't know a damn thing and now see when I I remember walking on set on my first day and being having not known the show that well, so like I wasn't like starstruck in a, I knew you as famous people, but I was so intimidated. I remember being so intimidated because you all knew so much, and you have this. I don't, do people tell you this that you have this like presence? You have like this sort of aura and energy of like <laughs> holding the holding the set. No, you do, you do. Well, I, I mean, maybe it's also the fact that you are. I reverted to my Irish like oh god stop <laughs> she's no, just like you're nice like <laughs> curling in on yourself and it's like we're just talking about how well achieved you're no, allowed to yes. say you can I'm going oh, to be yes <laughs> to accept the praise thank you Lord. but like no. that is and people have said it like people that come on set you probably don't hear them but people that come on for days or supporting roles that come on and they just are like oh my god she's just got this like energy of someone that really knows what they're doing and oh can really I remember I remember using the phrase you like command the set and not in a arrogant way and I've never ever seen you get up in arms about anything other than the work and about things that really matter and to have gone from some place that of, of very little knowledge in terms of like technically even to where you are now like that's and it's not even been that long no I mean well First, you know, I had a lot of great support in season one. And what I did have, I mean, if you look at season one, if you look at all of the actors that we had on that, yeah. I mean, the just brilliant British actors who had been around for a long time, who had done a lot of stuff. And even though Sam and I were pretty new, Sam had done quite a lot of stuff, but I was just surrounded by incredible people. So mm-hmm. I was just learning off all of them all the time Mm. just watching everybody and just being like can I steal 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 but I do think one of the things that I try and do at work is make it a a welcoming place because I think one of the hardest things to do is come on to a show for a day or two or you know even if you are a regular on the show but you're only in like one or two days this week or one or two days next month you never get the rhythm that we get you know I am in such a privileged place because I'm in every day I don't get phased I don't get overwhelmed because that's my (laughs) that's where I spend most of my life you know what I mean and you have so many chances and opportunities to get it right and get it wrong and and so it just feels so comfortable but for someone was stepping onto that you know I remember what it was like to walk on to a set where I don't really know anybody and people aren't as you know they're not they're not kind of like oh Katrina oh yes can you here's your chair they're like yo you know (laughs) you're just barely better than an extra stand Uh over there say your line get it done quick don't Mm -hmm. make a mistake and then Mm -hmm. piss off you know and that's a terrifying and horrifying place to be but yet if everybody's not good and if everybody's not comfortable the show suffers. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like you're only as good as every other person in the scene. Totally. And that's, I think, one of the big things where, you know, I just, I can't stand when you meet selfish actors because it just drives me crazy. Yeah. And I, it's I, like, I, I, why do you think you're more important? Oh, that's my cat destroying that's Eddie. the couch. We've got Eddie. Hi, Come Eddie. Come over, Eddie. Hello. <laughs> We've matched tonight, Eddie. Um, to have that ability to sort of, 
command the set and make people feel welcome and have respect I think that's quite new I don't think that that's always been the case and I think it's really important that for like young actresses or other people that want to get into it can look to that and see that as something to strive for yeah look things are changing and we're all learning as we go along and I think the you know right now there's so many opportunities for women in this business in front of the camera what I've noticed is, you know, I'm very comfortable in a group of men, in a room full of men. I'm used to that atmosphere, but I've also had to be used to that atmosphere, yeah. right? And it's kind of been like that on our show yeah. from day one. You know, we've had it in season one. I remember when Laura Donnelly came on to the show, I nearly knocked her over. I was like a <laughs> Labrador. I was like, oh my God, you're my age and you're a woman and you're like <laughs> Irish, like talk to me. Oh my God, like, yeah. You're scary, like go away. <laughs> but um, because it was just, there was so many Highlanders, it was so many guys. Yeah. But what I noticed is that there's a very different atmosphere on a set when you have more women, not in front of the camera, but like in, in the crew and as a director or... Mm. You know, when I worked on Money Monster with Jodie as she was the director and she had a lot of women in the crew. I mean, our DP was um, male in a lot of the, the, the camera department and stuff like that. But it just had a different energy. And it's, it's funny. It's not better. No. It's just different. Totally. And I think, you know, we try on our show to have female directors come in. But I think some women can work very well with the rest of the crew being male. Mm -hmm. But I also see some women where it's a different dynamic. So and, I, and I see that they would thrive so much better if... There's a few more women around. If there was a few more women around. Yeah. And it's interesting. I had a, an amazing conversation with this um, director, Alice Waddington. Um, she's a Spanish director and she's um, got a movie coming out this year. And we had this most incredible conversation about... She had primarily just a, an entire female crew wow. and what that felt like and what that did to the film and how it changed. And I, I've seen her film as beautiful and it, it is, it's a just, it's such a different type of film to anything I've really seen. Like it's so feminine. Uh -huh. In in a, you know in her own very particular way, yeah. it's, and that can span so much as well. Feminine can span mountains, but yeah, but this is very particular. So mm. I, you know, I think in our industry, we just really need to provide an environment where more women can be behind the camera. So we've had the album, we've had the book, and we've had the film that have been created in some way by a woman that has influenced you, a cool mm -hmm. woman in your life. Is there just a woman out with those things that's had a major impact on your life? I, I think I've read nearly everything Joan Didion has ever written. Cool. I don't know. There's something about how she writes that just resonates with me in such a way. And I want to live in her time and just do all that. And her favorite book, they're, they're making it. And I'm, I'm sort of... It's the first time, um, the last thing he wanted, and it's one of my favorite books ever of hers. Um, and I'm sort of can we get excited and part? also well, no, because it's already it's, oh. it's. I was told. I remember years ago trying to see if I could get the rights to it, and I was told she will never give the rights to her books. Oh my god! Um, and then I, I remember, I got one of those. You know, those I get the emails from the Hollywood Reporter, or whatever. You know, the the mm -hmm. headlines. And, and Dee Reese is directing it, who I'm very excited about. And um, um, now why brain? Uh, oh, no. Anne Hathaway uh -huh. is um, playing the lead. So I'm sort of excited uh, to see. But it's the first time I think I've ever felt an ownership to, oh, a, yeah. to a, a, a book or something where uh -huh. they're making something. And I was like, oh shit, I've turned into one of those crazy fans where yep. I'm like, what are they going to do to it? It's like the Harry, Don't ruin it. Uh -huh. It's like when Harry yeah. Potter comes out, every child is like, it needs to be exactly how I imagine yeah. everything or, in my you head. Know, with Outlander. And, and oh, I course, understand yeah. how all those women feel now because I'm like, you, what are you going to do to this character? And, and all of these characters, and what are they going to look like? And, you yeah. know, and now I'm like, oh God, that's I actually, I understand it. But that's and the first time. I was going to say, yeah. that's the first time you've like been able to, because I can't say that I've ever been a major fan of anything yeah. to the point that I've met some of our fans who are unbelievably 
um, dedicated and, and incredible with the show. But I can't say I can relate to that. So, and if you, if that's I feel the first like time feel, you can. Yeah, I feel like it's the first time. That's really cool. Yeah. And now I know how they, and now I know how they feel. And now I get it. <laughs> and I, I apologize for ever questioning why they, they questioned so much. But now I know. <laughs> why they know every detail of <laughs> yeah. every story. And on well, that note. And on that note, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. For being my first guest and taking the risk on whether hey. or not this would work. I have um, no doubts. And thank you for having us in your very beautiful home as well. You're welcome. Apparently it's very echoey. I'm sorry. Because <laughs> it's a palace. And <laughs> <laughs> cut. Up next week we have model, game changer and author of her book Mixed Feelings, Naomi Shimada. She was born in Japan, Spanish speaking and now lives in London so her recommendations are wild. Tune in. Tune in.